spoilers and offensive content to come. We are Carlos and Dave Anime Rave. We are the best anime review and reaction show on the internet. And today we have a kinda sorta doubleheader review because we are going to review and react to Yuki Yuna is a hero, the hero chapter, aka uh, Yusha no Show episode 5. And we'll have a timestamp up for that because we're going to talk about something else first. Dave, I subjected myself to great personal pain to read something that is almost universally terrible a Japanese light novel. Even when I like characters and settings in it, like, say, most of this uh, Yusha, the de- de- Aru kind of fiction, I'm not a fan of Japanese light novels. They're a little too badly written and creepy. Really creepy. You can tell a lot of them are done by dudes. Uh, uh, now, obviously, of course, Japanese language is different from English, and I have to take into account translations. I'm not reading these in their native kanji or Japanese or whatever, because I, I'm not fluent in that language. I'm not even basically trained in that language, barring a few basics I've gleaned from watching subtitled anime. <laughs> so I will make some... Um, I, I'll, I allow some leeway for that, I, but I do, typically don't like light novels. I read a light novel recently to its entirety because uh, people were saying about how it takes place concurrently during season two of Yuki Yuna, and that's, oh, I am not going to get her last name right at all, but it's the one with the main character, Mabuki, and it's the one with the abbreviation Kumeyu. As I was reading this, I made notes, and I sent those notes to you over Facebook. Yep. Um, I kind of want to start this episode out, and I, I, I you agree with me <laughs> that... Uh, I'm telling you what you agree with, Dave, that, um, uh, you know, we kind of want to talk about that first because not only do does it happen concurrently, like before and kind of during the beginning of the hero chapter, its bonus chapter, chapter seven the of, of Kumeyu, actually takes place immediately after episode four of this that we just saw last week. Something I want to mention here, because we have had, had some comments on this, and... We're super appreciative for all your comments, by the way. And, hey, thanks for commenting and everything else. I mean, sharing of opinions is... I, I love going back and forth with different things, but... I got two things I need to call out our commenters on. Uh, sure. One, no, the Taisha is a fucking stupid, evil entity with what they're doing and how they hide... What's going on? And Mabuki's chapter highlights that, but... I jive with Mabuki's train of thought so much. But, and here's something I'm going to call out season two on, and you've heard me say this before, and I've said in the comments, and some of you guys don't agree with me, but that that's fine. To understand everything that's going on in a anime chapter... The audience should not have to read and invest themselves in the additional information. Now, these are light novels that don't have official translations yet. Mm-hmm. I mean, season two has an official sub, God help us. A terrible official with, sub. Where they put marginal effort in. But I shouldn't have to delve into the additional materials to understand everything that's going on. And now that Carlos has told me everything that happens in the supplemental material... This is the supplemental materials. Holy fuck, this is... This shit... Sorry. This material... No, call it shit. ...needed (laughs) to be in this season. Season two, especially now, should have been 26 episodes. And I, I joked as you were telling me this material in their chapter sequences. And I'm like, oh, okay. I, I guess this whole thing deserves maybe three, four episodes. Maybe six, seven episodes. Like, we needed... Th- this on its own couldn't have been 13 episodes. No, this is seven I, 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 episodes I'm, 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 ta- I'm, I'm talking Mabuki. Yeah, Mabuki. no, no, yeah. Like, honestly, that should have been its own 13 chapter segment. And then Yuki Yuna, the hero chapter, needed to be its own 13-episode segment. You still could have done the movies. The movie just wouldn't have been part of this. It could have been its own supplemental, supplemental material. material. But I know right now um, different individuals that I've clashed with recently on, in the comments are like, 
oh, but Dave, this is what they intended. This is what they planned. So this, uh, this is totally okay. Now, hang on. Let's not belittle them too much. Well, I, <laughs> it's their opinion, but I'm sorry. Based on everything, their opinion is wrong. Like, here's the thing. I don't think... What I really want... What I... What I... Uh, what I personally would like, after having read Mabuki's chapter, would by the way, folks, go read Kumeyu. You a little bit of googling will let you find the, all seven chapters. The seventh is the bonus one. Make sure you read that too. Um, and even though I shat on light novels, I want to I want to say something right here. Uh, uh, Mabuki herself is awesome. She's a fantastic character. And it, what I envision, I don't envision her having her own, like, I don't envision what season two did, but just the first half being Mabuki's story instead of Washio Sumi's. No. What I, when I was, because there's so much revealed about the world in this. There's so much revealed about who the Taisha really are, what happened, who the heavenly gods are. That the heavenly gods may be close to manifesting. That the the fucking uh, Shinju is dying. That the heavenly gods, like, had a deal with humanity that they stay on their side of the wall. And the heavenly gods never have to see them and we're cool. And that uh, because they didn't do a fire offering ceremony, that's why the gods sent the vertex. Because they were pissed again. And... There's so much revealed about the world. There's so much that happens that factors into season two of Yuki Yuna. The fucking the the entirety of the Hero Club is featured in this book. One of these one of uh, Mabuki's friends actively has a chapter where she interacts with the the Hero Club. We learn that school clubs were kind of the Taisha's recruiting method, and that one of the characters here, her club got disbanded because their leader said, "Well, we're not needed anymore." Another club was chosen. There's so much about the world that we learn. In Mabuki's chapter, and Mabuki herself is an amazing character. She she was Karin's rival. She was originally going to inherit Gin's terminal, but they picked Karin, and Mabuki was pissed. She feels like the the Earth Gods robbed her of a purpose, uh, only to become Yukiuna ODST, which she thought is beneath her. She hates the Heavenly Gods for basically putting humanity through all this pain. And what's fascinating is that all of Mabuki's all of her motivation starts as very selfish, but as the story continues and ends, her actions and her promises remain the same, but they become for much more altruistic reasons. Like, she initially promises nobody on her 32-person squad will die. That's her promise. Under her command, nobody dies. And originally, it's to prove to the Taisha and to the Shinju that she's worthy of being a hero, not Karin. And then eventually it becomes, no, fuck that. People shouldn't have to die for this. She swears to herself like like she takes up learning the bayonet rifle, which she wasn't good at, and she trained herself to become good at it because she was going to blow this out of the water because she feels that the, the Shinju robbed her of a childhood since she was doing all her prep to become a hero. It also physically sounds like she should be super ripped, too, which I thought, thought would be cool, although pictures in the light novel show that she's kind of a similar frame mm. of every single other character in this fiction, right? Um... She also has a love interest. Well, her and Aya, that, there's a bath scene with them together that is exceptionally eerie. But the way this light novel's written, it still reminds me that it's probably only Yuri to appease to fanboys. It's probably not really going to have a meaningful same-sex relationship. But, I mean, you know, Takahiro could prove me wrong. I doubt he will, though, in any Yusha de Aru thing, period. What, what what irks me is that I read an interview, they were considering animating this as part of season two, and they decided, now nah, let's throw it in a light novel. All my complaints about season two have been that it's been too short, and that well, the Washio Sumi stuff could have been incorporated in flashbacks. I still think that should happen, but I also think that season two should have more of a ensemble kind of focus, kind of like um, the best example I can think of right now is Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, where there was no protagonist, various episodes focused on different characters. How cool would it have been that if season two of Yuki Yuna starts with, you know, finagle some excuse for why Yuna's group is called back into hero action, and then episode two, introduce Mabuki, and show her story and how she got to where she is, and let's have this back and forth between these groups, occasionally flashing back to Washio Sumi to introduce Aki, who also is super important in Kumeyu, and... We could even do a few flashback episodes all the way to Wakaba to cement them and get some of their stories done too, right? And then that I figure between all of that, 
and eventually having the Hero Club... Because I don't think we're going to see Mabuki in this episode we're going to watch today. I don't think we're going to see her in the next episode either. But how cool would it have been if the stories converged into one big awesome climax, right? Because Mabuki in that bonus chapter interacts with Karin, who after the events of episode 4 of the hero chapter is outside the wall trying to find some answer to help Yuna, right? Mm -hmm. So this factors all the way up to right now. And... How cool would a season two have been if it was 26 episodes that focused on Yuna's croup, uh, 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 Yuna's croup, her croup, her group, that sounds dirty, um, on Mibuki's story, kind of, kind of, uh, 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 intercut between the two stories, have also some relevant flashback materials and eventually lead to where we are now with Togo offered as the fire sacrifice, them saving her and then having Yuna having to go through all this suffering that eventually leads to a big, awesome, ultimate climax of all the heroes and all the sentinels who are going to get hero powers and prestige now having to fucking face off and kill a heavenly god. That would be amazing to me, and we're not going to get that. Unless we get that in these last two episodes. But even then, if they suddenly introduce uh, uh, Mibuki now, I'm going to be like, great. It's a good thing I read this or I'd be so lost. Great. Who are you? Like, we'll know her now. Yeah. And I'll be delighted. But fuck me, man. It's... The only other notes I have here that I didn't send you is that uh, I read some interviews and part of what they wanted to do in this season is that they wanted to think of a way to really bring down Yuna by affecting her everyday life. And they thought, how the fuck are we going to down this character? She's so fucking happy all the time, even when she knows things are bad. And they did it in a way by just making her unable to tell her friends what's wrong. They made a good decision. And in the last season, their big thing was that, you know, at the time they made Yuki Yuna, there was a lot of magical girl shows where, where the big, Big theme is that being a magical girl actually kind of sucks and is very bad and you'll die. Mm. And they wanted to show, well, what if the characters wanted to die but couldn't? And that's kind of hey, interesting, you, too. That, that, that's interesting. I've read a couple of <sighs> really bad comment sections here recently. Not for our stuff. Mm -hmm. But, again, the the common thread when you talk about Yuki Yuna in some segments is the comparison to Madoka. Sure. And the actual article that came up was talking about, you know, how these two kind of play off each other and everything else. But then they went into how, no, it's its own thing completely. It wasn't trying to ride Madoka's... Um, coattails? Coattails. Thank you. I was thinking of that word. I could tell. This is our mind sink. <laughs> and how, you know, Yuki Yuna earned its place. And then I get to the, the actual comment section because I like to hurt myself sometimes. Yeah, sometimes. me too, Dave. Me too. And, you know, it, it's people going on about, oh, well, once I realized that, you know, it was the same thing, I stopped watching after episode two. Or, yeah, the, the, the series was great until the ending when they just had no ramifications. I'm just like... Those are people's voices. I, yes. <laughs> I, I, I imagine that's them speaking. <laughs> I don't. I I think that Madoka was a much better show because it did it first. It's like, shut up! Like <clears throat> anybody who compares these two shows, obviously doesn't have a fucking clue what made each one their own show. Look, I I, I shit on Madoka a lot, but. Even I'll admit there's some things Madoka did better, and I would, if someone tried to tell me Madoka, this next season of Madoka that's coming ripped off Yuki Yuna stuff, I'd be like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, like, it's very much, other than trying to condense the two shows into here, um, magical girl suffering... Which is kind of what the genre is. Which is kind of what the genre is, but... In fairness, they do both fall under this kind of genre. <laughs> yes, but guess what? Madoka wasn't the first. I know. And that's what people don't tend to realize is Madoka didn't create this genre. Technically, if you want to go way back, our very first anime show that we reviewed was Magical Girl Suffering as well. 
Yeah, we gotta go back and finish watching Utena. <laughs> Holy shit, Rowan must be pissed. <laughs> so, I, I mean... You can go way back and you can find Magical Girl suffering shows. Hell, the first season of Sailor Moon, the first story arc in the manga and yep. the animes, kind of falls under that too. Mm-hmm. Fucking the third season of the original anime, the entire Sailor, the entire Sailor Saturn arc, is that. <laughs> like, I mean, look at how season one of Sailor Moon ends. Serena loses all of her friends. And then, with their kind of ghosts, manage to defeat Beryl while dying doing it. Hello, magical girl suffering right there, assholes. It was even before that when they discovered oh. their origin. That was played a little bit more in the manga and in Sailor uh, Moon Crystal, the sadness of their story. Their actually, plight. no, for that you have to watch the Japanese side, because remember... Yeah, our Dick job got did, censored. did very much... Stupid Dick... <laughs> DIC Bo- people. Bo- both <laughs> set both censored ours, mm-hmm. took out any of the injuries they got. Cause I mean, in those last number of episodes, they were getting cut up, bruised, beaten. They had physical injuries, everything. And we didn't see any of that in the English version. There's so much it's kind of like how you can't really find the fighting game today that isn't somehow using concepts from Street Fighter 2. Yeah. And you can't really find the Magical Girl show today that isn't using some concept from Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. And that's what irks me. It's like when people say that uh, The Force Awakens is just a carbon copy of A New Hope. You know what else is a carbon copy of A New Hope? Every single story. I'll leave it up to people to figure that one out themselves. It's called The Hero's Journey. Look it up. But um before we get to the episode proper i just want to say that the character of mabuki despite being in a a light novel which i hate she is an amazing character and i'm not just saying that because her thoughts on the taisha and the gods completely match mine (laughs) mabuki hates the heavenly gods and the moment she heard that her friend was going to get sacrificed to them she was like why should we have to sacrifice shit they're our enemy and when she heard togo was going to take Aya's place. She's still like, I don't know who this person is, but why is she sacrificing herself? And then in the bonus chapter, she she talks about how she heard the heroes save Togo, and she's like, she doesn't blame them at all. She doesn't, she's like, yeah, that might doom us sooner. But Mabuki firmly believes that if you get go down the road where you have to sacrifice people, that you've already lost. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and she hates the Taisha. She, she, The only reason she keeps doing what she's doing is to protect her squad, and the only reason she's okay with getting becoming a real hero now is for the extra protection it will give her squad. She that the term hero to her, she's like it means nothing coming from the Taisha anymore. Mm -hmm. I love Mabuki. No, look, the 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 Taisha is, and people try and justify the Taisha's actions as you know they're a post Armageddon style organization that's just trying to save. What's left of humanity. Yes. Okay. I get it. Hell, what? Uh, uh, and we, we play devil's advocate a bit. Also, we do learn that the Taisha does have the noble goal of trying to reclaim the Earth from the Heavenly Gods. Defeating the Heavenly Gods in some way is part of the Taisha's game plan, to be fair. And that's fine, but you've got all these girls who are... Call it what you will. Fighting for the Taisha is a sacrifice one way or another. Mm-hmm. Hell, we they, can... Even with, with Mabuki's group being more of a martial v- part of the Taisha. You, 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 ODST. They, and I, I did like that reference, by the way. <laughs> it's um, totally ODST. They're just... Is, they're kind of mini Spartans. <laughs> exa- exactly. The fact that the Taisha is still being just as scummy and leaving out information and not not keeping them in the loop, which, okay, is a very military thing, but, again, you're giving superpowers to girls who come back and kick your ass. There needs to be a little bit of back and forth here, guys. And the fact that Mabuki, after everything you've told me, didn't grab her squadron and wipe the fucking Taisha out... I think is a fucking miracle. The the thing is that uh, Mabuki actively says 
there's a couple of choice lines she has, and most of them are in her monologue, but some of them she says out loud. Uh-huh. One of them is when she yells at Aki behind the mask that she'll become Taisha, that Mabuki will become Taisha herself and change it from the inside. The other thing is that Mabuki, in a bit of inner monologue, and I don't think I included this in the notes I gave to you, when she's talk uh, just before she meets Karin again, and they talk about what's been happening to Yuna, she no- she talks about how the outside of the barrier is getting hotter and hotter, and it's the machinations of the heavenly gods, and she basically has a bit of sarcastic monologue with herself. She's like, "What what benign gods? What divine beings? These heavenly gods? What 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 non what what mature?" non-childish kind of beings they must be to be so angry you know like she she you, venom drips from her when she thinks of godly beings including the shinju and she never says this outright but i mean look i've talked about the fetishization in magical girl genres and this is shit that both feminist groups and lgbt groups in japan have talked at length about how Magical girl shows fetishize girls by doing this thing about only pure girls can do magic. And they do describe that in Kumeyu as well. Even the Sentinels have to be like virgin middle schoolers, which is mm. so stupid. And it really paints a poor picture of these gods that they can't grant their power to anyone willing. And we can still have all the main characters still be girls. It can They can still be girls even if boys can get these powers too. And it, it just speaks to the awesomeness of girls. And maybe, maybe for all we know, that's part of the gods' con. For all we know, the Shinju could be just as corrupt and shitty as the heavenly gods, and they're all fucking lolicon perverts that will only interface with girls because fuck the gods. But I don't know. It's stuff I've talked about before. I just wish this season was different, and it included the entirety of this story, which was cool. Mabuki's crew is nowhere near as interesting as Yuna's. Yuna's kind of the static, lovable center of a bunch of dynamic friends, Mm -hmm. whereas Mabuki is the dynamic, awesome core of a bunch of static people who kind of just heighten her story. They're still cool, especially the one with dual personalities, who they, who, who, uh, (laughs) Mabuki acknowledges her as two different people. Yeah. Uh, she, she's kind of neat and, and I, I, I is pretty cool, but I mean, it's just that Mabuki, I wanted her in this season though. She would have been such a cool other protagonist Mm -hmm. kind of like the ang zuko thing how that like the last airbender is really two protagonists they would have been cool to see two protagonists in the season from contrasting parts like very disparate parts of the world and converging that would have been just awesome missed opportunity super missed opportunity do you have more to say about kumeyu before we start watching uh chapter or, or episode five of yusha no show nope let's jump in Let's do it. Oh, uh, okay. Thanks for clicking that time timestamp, folks. Um, uh, season two should have been longer and should have included Kumeyu, and you're wrong if you think otherwise. Let's go. <laughs> Ouch. I will say now that I've heard some people complaining that the Amazon subs in this episode are extra bad because they don't differentiate between the different gods. Oh, great. But since I hate all the gods, I'm fine with it. Hey, let's talk a little bit about uh, Yuna's getting married to the Shinju. Um, Fuck that. Remember when we were just talking about... But, it, folks, if you click that timestamp, you missed the part where I talked about how the gods are all fucking lolicon perverts. <laughs> well, I mean... <laughs> Speak of the devil, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I want the gods in this show to all get killed, preferably by an angry Togo. We got more murals in the intro. Okay, so that's the um, original... It, it, that's uh, Wakaba's group, yeah. yeah. Then we have uh, Washio Squad with Gen. Oh, Gen. Oh, you didn't deserve to die. You have the coolest swords, axes. <laughs> she sword does. Sword axes. Yes. I, I, I do like how it is their original forms of their weapons. Yep. Rather than what they upgraded to. And here, Yuna's crew is all in their Mankai form. <laughs> with all of the, the um, ver- Vertex mm-hmm, they fought. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their their Mankai forms are actually pretty cool. I'm not a big fan of the ultra kimono look for most of them. Uh, I think Yuna's works the best, but I kind of like their default forms a lot better. I, th- I think Togo's really worked for her. Yeah, it, it, Togo's was good too. I'll, I'll give you that. So let's just quickly talk a little bit more about 
Yuna saying that she's going to marry the Shinju Sama. Dave, get the Shinju on the line. I don't need to. There's already a nuke on the way. Gotcha. So this is very reminiscent of feudal Japan, where a village would sacrifice a chosen girl from their village to stop the god's anger, get rid of a storm or a disaster. Did this and happen in feudal Japan? Yes. I suppose it happened in feudal everywhere, didn't it? Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. The, Fuck, humanity is stupid. The, the, the sacrifice of a lone virgin girl to be the bride of said god I as the sacrifice. I don't like where this is going. Nor should you. Oh, hang on, hang on. Dave, holy shit, I can't believe this, but we have a special guest on the show today. I have on the line the Shinju-sama himself. Uh, go ahead, Shinju, you're on the line. Hey, guys, how's it going? Uh, just fine, Shinju. Uh, listen, we got a few questions for you. I think Dave has a few questions. Go ahead, Dave. I'm a big fan of the show. Dave? Dave? Say hello to my nuke, motherfucker. I don't understand what you're talking about. I, ah! I was hoping you were going to ask the Shinju more questions before you nuked him, Dave, because nope. I got to tell you, that totally wasn't me voicing him, and I have no doubt he had some choice lines. Oh, hang on. Oh, wow, that really hurt. Hey, so you got questions for me? Yeah, uh, why are you marrying a middle schooler? Because they're so darn attractive. I just hung up on the Shinju. I don't think this was going to go in a good direction, Dave. <laughs> I, I agree with you entirely. You send all the nukes. Second nukes on the way. Second nukes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Togo's at the wall, blowing a hole. Then another hole, and she's like, I'm walking on sunshine! Oh! There are tears streaming down her face. <laughs> I can't help but notice once again, where the fuck is her parents? I don't even care anymore. I still do. We have Charlie Brown syndrome, something fierce here. This this ties into what we talked about before people clicked on the timestamp to not listen to it. But Yuki Yuna is just, the show is just starting to make me mad. There's a reason that that thing above her head is coming into focus. Is that one of those incense things they yeah. burn? Okay. It's one of the little shrines of the Shinju-sama. Hmm, I don't like where this is going. Um, you're not talking saving here. You're talking... Dave, are they going to do human instrumentality? Because if they're going to do human instrumentality, I'm going to lose it. I talked about some conditions that would make me turn on the show so fast. One of them would be um, the girls not being gay, as they've been shown to very clearly be, and going the heteronormative route. Yuna marrying the Shinju doesn't count because this is a weird godly union that uh. she's being forced into against her will, kind of. Another thing that will turn me against the show is any kind of it becoming Evangelion. I will zero pie this shit so fast. Fuck you, Taisha. Fuck you, Shinju Sama. That's not actually the continued existence of the human race. That is some sort of mythological Eden where even as you just admitted, those who had more faith would be would have it better. Fuck you. Everything I said before about Kumeyu should uh, being part of season two and should have been happening concurrently, back and forth would have made this even better because the moment Mabuki <sighs> hears about this, she and Karin are going to start planning on how to kill some gods. This is really upsetting me, Dave. And not in the... Look, there's a good kind of upset to be with a show like this and a bad kind. The good kind is when... You're enjoying yourself through catharsis, and it's because, you know, you're yelling at these characters in their knowing full well that they're fictional in their fictional world, and that's part of the story. When you're yelling at Takahiro and Studio Gokumi because you're pissed off that this is what they're doing, I think there's a difference. 
And I'm starting to really get a hate boner for one Taka hero right now. Real hate boner, Dave. I like how everyone's basically thinking, okay, hang on. If we start taking out the Taisha now, maybe we'll be done by dinner. <laughs> well, and the ODST group aren't um, yet heroes, so they wouldn't be much of a fight. If they even fought them. No, they wouldn't. The Sentinels all love Mabuki. If Mabuki says, let the heroes through, in fact, back them up. The Taisha's gonna die. <laughs> Fuck this season. It's making me upset, Dave. Well, we're gonna finish. No, oh, of course. I'm not... Dave, I'm too... Inv- Even if this episode makes me supremely angry, I will watch the final one in two weeks because it's not happening next week. I like that. I like a little bit of Yuna just saying, but I'm like this because I saved you. I, I, I like that because, yeah, in a way, there's some beef here between them. And that's another thing that I think there could have been here. Look, these two are fated to be awesome Yuri lovers. I get that because I'm the one always saying it. <laughs> but the fact is, yeah, this is a difficult situation and there should be some beef, right? You know, like. I don't think you want to get Togo mad, though, because she might blow up more than the wall this time. No, I, I I, would not try to intentionally piss off Togo. Are you insane? Yeah. I would try to be on her good side all the time or risk getting sniped. See, I, I think... I don't actually think that she took the curse from Togo. No, I, I agree, but that's not what she, how they see it. I know, but... I think even Yuna's wrong in this case because it wasn't her saving Togo that did that to her. They've explained now that she had a limited body created by the Shinjuzama. This was a plan. Oh, I realize. But we did see when Yuna pulled Togo out of there that the burns and withering on Togo transferred over to Yuna, right? True. So it's probably a little bit of both. Mm. I still agree with your whole trap. I'm not... Oh, the where Yo, Togo was a trap to lure Yuna there? Yeah. That's not what I thought of. There was a commenter who said that. I, I actually disagree with that notion. Oh. I, I'm really starting to think it was a trap. Giving, giving Yuna a not-human body, putting her in a situation to take on the curse... All of a sudden, now she needs to marry the Shinju Sama to save mankind. Oh, no, the Shinju has it, some it, long it, cons it, of its own. Don't it, get me it wrong. It sounds like one giant con. It is a giant con, but I, I, I just let's continue. Oh, it's key. I feel really bad for you right now. It's too bad. This is all your fucking fault. Why do you keep doing tarot readings? If only we, if only we just burned that deck. <laughs> this would have never death, happened. Death. Death. There's always supposed to be one death card in here. I do like this scene. I like Aki calling them here to explain things to lay them out. I just wish that she would take off her mask. It's like you said, she kind of put it on and became the faceless Taisha. And she definitely... Another reason why Kumeyu should have been part of the season, Her, she is a big part of that story, and Mabuki fucking hates her. Like, because she's like, how, how can you be there and be so indifferent? They even have a talk about how, you know, she knew Gin and she realized that being part of the Faceless Taisha was the best way to proceed, right? Like, mm. that's ultimately why they did the reanimation of Washio Sumi, to introduce her, because she's going to factor in now. That could have been done way better with Kumeyu being mm. part of the season. They're great. Carlos, are they about to throw at us a twist like they did in episode one? We still thought this was a slice of life anime. Well, the phone started doing the warning it did back, and then in, broke in season one. It, it, it did the warning four stars. It, it, yeah, but it did the extra alarm mm-hmm. it did when Togo broke the wall. The alarm that says, "Oh shit, there's a hole in the wall." Oh no! Oh no! Did did the Shinju just die? <laughs> I think were they, that's were, what that. Were means. they too late? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, we shouldn't have all been here talking. <laughs> we should have been planning something. When did this show suddenly cross over with Independence Day? <laughs> Is that a heavenly god? They did mention in Kumeyu that the heavenly gods might be close to manifesting themselves. Is this what the Master of the Vertex looks like in person? A big... A giant... Disc? <laughs> disc... Burning... To stamp out humanity? 
Huh. Okay, I, I, I will admit, I didn't see this coming. No, me neither. Aki orders them to basically hold off the attack from the Heavenly God until the Shinkan can finish. To sacrifice themselves. To do human instrumentality. Do we have to call it that? Dave, we've been watching anime a long time, you and I, well, way longer than the anime, right? Yeah. Human instrumentality is not a plot point we're unfamiliar with. It's come up in shows before. Ava's the obvious example, but in Read or Die, the villain Joker is trying to enact a version of human instrumentality. Connect everybody through an intellect. Yeah, and he got his ass killed for trying that. He wasn't dead. That's the kind of human instrumentality I approve of, the one that gets stopped in its tracks. I get that their backs to the wall, but they've got to realize what they're doing. They're not saving humanity. They're, they're finally ending it. They just want to survive. They've given up saving the human race. And frankly, to me, it still sounds like a sacrifice. They're sacrificing the entire human race to what? Just die and go to heaven? That's what it sounds like. I've read too many books and seen too many shows on this exact thing. And it's always, no, you're not going to be surviving, walking with the gods. You're dying and going to heaven. The the whole thing that I, I called out earlier about the whole, those that have more faith will get more. That's a fucking heaven thing. That We're talking Bible here. So what's going to happen here is Yuna's going to realize her friends are fighting and dying to try and allow her to do her thing, and she's going to abandon it and fight. Because this is bullshit. This can't resolve in 22 more minutes. It just can't. And ultimately, folks, I told you clicking on that timestamp would spare you. I lied. If, if Kumeyu was part of the season and it was the ideal season two I talked about earlier, then there could have been two or three more episodes after this where they force the heavenly gods to manifest and take them out in a big ball of triumph that I would just love. Instead, what we're going to get is this human instrumentality bullshit. You were absolutely right. Yuna's going to abandon the Shinkan and go help her friends. And then something's going to happen where the, the world gets reborn properly because of what they did. And in a way, it's just going to... Kind of, it, it, it's going to end up with them being all okay in the end. Maybe without Yuna, who will be, have become the new Shinju. And then we can speculate as to whether or not there'll be another season of this show to do all the things that should have happened now. I have no other things to add right now. I'm glad the last episode is two weeks away. It'll give me some time to cool the fuck off. Because I am not pleased. I I don't like where the story has gone. I don't like where it's going. I, uh... I'm really getting irritated by it, to be quite frank. Oh, you have no more thoughts? Carl's name, Anime Rave. Anime Rave.xyz. Watch things. We need to go do something fun right now. <laughs> Can we do something fun like watch, uh... Uh, what's your face? Uh, Kino travel to the country where they skin each other because at least that will be set to hilariously inappropriate music. <laughs>